The structural framework of the red pulp consists of a network of reticular fibers. The blood passes through this network and enters large sinusoids. It is also lined by fixed macrophages. The sinusoids empty into small veins which ultimately collect into trabecular vein that continue toward the hilum. This circulatory arrangement gives the phagocytes of the spleen an opportunity to identify and engulf any damaged or infected cells in the circulating blood. Lymphocytes are scattered throughout the red pulp and the area surrounding the white pulp has a high concentration of macrophages and dendritic cells. Thus, any microorganism or other antigen in the blood will quickly come to the attention of the splenic lymphocytes. The spleen tears so easily that a seemingly minor blow to the left side of the abdomen can rupture the capsule. The result is serious internal bleeding and eventual circulatory shock. Such an injury is a known risk of contact sports such as football and hockey and of more solitary athletic activities such as skiing. Because the spleen is relatively fragile, it is very difficult to repair it surgically. Sutures typically tear out before they have been tensed enough to stop the bleeding. A severely ruptured spleen is removed. The process called splenectomy. A person without a spleen survives but has greater risk of bacterial infections, particularly involving pneumococcal bacteria, than do the individuals with the functional spleen. Finally, we must describe the source of the lymphocytes in blood. Some are cells on their way from the bone marrow or thymus to the secondary lymphoid organs, but the vast majority are cells that are participating in lymphocyte traffic between the secondary lymphoid organs, blood, lymph and all the tissues of the body. Lymphocytes from all the secondary lymphoid organs constantly enter the lymphatic vessels draining them. All lymphoid organs, not just lymph nodes, are drained by lymphatic vessels. Simultaneously, some blood lymphocytes are pushing through the endothelium of venules all over the body to enter the interstitial fluid. From there, they move into lymphatic capillaries and along the lymphatic vessels to the lymph nodes. They may then leave the lymphatic vessels to take up residence in the node. This recirculation is going on all the time, not just during an infection. Although the migration of lymphocytes into an inflamed area is greatly increased by the chemotaxis processes described earlier, lymphocyte trafficking greatly increases the likelihood that any given lymphocyte will encounter the antigen it is specifically programmed to recognize. In contrast to the lymphocytes, polymorphonuclear granulocytes and monocytes do not recirculate. Once they leave the bloodstream to enter a tissue, they remain there or they die. Let us discuss the lymphocyte origins. B lymphocytes or simply B cells mature in the bone marrow and then they are carried by the blood to the secondary lymphoid organs. This overall process of maturation and migration continues throughout a person's life. All generations of lymphocytes that subsequently arise from these cells by cell division in the secondary lymphoid organs will be identical to the parent cells. That is, they will also be B cells. In contrast to the B cells, other lymphocytes leave the bone marrow in an immature state during fetal and early neonatal life. They are carried to the thymus 
and mature there before moving to the secondary lymphoid organs. These cells are called T lymphocytes or T cells. Like B cells, T cells also undergo cell division in the secondary lymphoid organs, the offspring being identical to the original T cells. In addition to B and T cells, there is another distinct population of lymphocytes called natural killer cells. These cells arise in the bone marrow, but their precursors and life history is still unclear. As we shall see, natural killer cells, unlike B and T cells, do not manifest specificity for antigens. Let us see functions of B cells and T cells. B cells, upon activation, differentiate into plasma cells which secrete antibodies, which are proteins that travel all over the body to reach antigens identical to those that stimulated their production. Plasma B cells are also called cartwheel cells because their nucleus resembles the wheel of cart or these are also called antibody factories. The antibodies combine with these antigens and guide an attack that eliminates the antigens or the cell bearing them. Let us see antibody mediated responses. The antibody mediated responses are also called humoral responses. The adjective humoral denoting communication by way of soluble chemical messengers. In this case, the antibodies in the blood. Antibody mediated responses have an extremely wide diversity of targets and are the major defense against bacteria, viruses and other microbes in the extracellular fluid and against toxic molecules or the toxins. T cells constitute a family that has two major functional subsets that is cytotoxic T cells and helper T cells. There are other subsets also called suppressor T cells which suppress the immune system from attacking own body cells. Another way to categorize T cells is not by function but rather by the presence of certain proteins called CD4 and CD8 in their plasma membranes. Cytotoxic T cells have CD8 and so these are commonly called CD8 cells. Helper T cells have CD4 and so these are commonly called CD4 cells. Cytotoxic T cells are attack cells. They travel to the location of the target, bind to them via antigens on these targets and following activation directly kill them via secreted chemicals without the intermediation of antibodies. Responses mediated by cytotoxic T cells are directed against the body's own cells that have become cancerous or infected with viruses or certain bacteria and parasites like viruses take up residence inside the host cells. It is worth emphasizing the important geographical differences in antibody mediated responses and responses mediated by cytotoxic T cells. In the former case, the B cells and plasma cells derived from them remain in whatever location the recognition and activation steps occurred and the plasma cells send their antibodies forth via the blood to seek out antigen identical to those that triggered the response. In the responses mediated by cytotoxic T cells, the cells themselves must enter the blood and seek out the antigen. We have now assigned roles to the B cells and cytotoxic T cells. Let us see what is the role performed by helper T cells. As their name implies, these cells do not themselves function as attack cells but rather facilitate the activation and function of both B cells and cytotoxic T cells. Helper T cells 
go through the usual first two stages of immune response in that they must first 